Hey everyone, John Daly here. I'm going to try and speak a little bit faster for this one just so I can cover a lot of ground with synthetic vitamins, naturally sourced vitamins, and whole food vitamins. Because there's a lot of misunderstanding, I think, with what they actually mean, especially the natural ones. Now, most vitamins, unfortunately, are made synthetically, so they're made in a laboratory and very cost affordably, basically, by these companies. So it's, it's evident why in this type of culture that we have this type of issue. Now, there are very good whole food companies out there, let's say Garden of Life, New Chapter, um, Mega Foods, and a couple others that are really emphasizing that they use no synthetics and that their products provide maximum absorption because they do have the cofactors with them. And I'll explain what cofactors are in a little bit. But what I really want to start off with is when you look at a lot of your products that you're taking at home, you may see things like acetates or palmitates or cobalmelionine, like a, a, a synthetic form of B12. And these are laboratory made. They have no natural basis. They don't have a similar structure even. They're just trying to mimic what the structure is in a whole food product. And that's why you can buy uh, 500 grams of ascorbic acid for $10 because it's a synthetically made product and it doesn't do the job of what the whole food supplement would do. So that's why you see a lot of talks on mega dosing. And just to put that bit more in perspective, and let's give you vitamin C. Vitamin C is one that we're all very familiar with. Um, even back in the day with Linus Pauling's book, uh, Vitamin C in the Common Cold. Um, Linus Pauling, he, he won the Nobel Prize um, in science for this, and what he discussed was actually, um, let's say taking a thousand milligrams of vitamin C can really boost immunity. Now, I view this very true in short term, um, but if you view synthetic vitamins um, as incomplete parts of a whole food, it really starts to make sense that we develop deficiencies later on in other things. Now, vitamin C, let's say ascorbic acid is roughly one-eighth of what vitamin C is. Um, an orange would have the rutin, it would have the ascorbogen, it would have the bioflavonoids, and, and, and other things to actually absorb the whole product. So if you think of ascorbic acid as this, this big domino uh, effect that from A to B and the thousand dominoes in between, a whole food or an orange will get you from one end to the other. And there's this effect in the body. The body reads it, understands it, click, 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 it goes through. Now, when you start taking an isolated set of that domino, um, the body says, okay, we gotta complete this, this cycle, like what do we do? So the body actually creates the missing links, the missing parts. And so this is the effect that the body has, or that the body will go through because it, want it wants to get the most of what it's taking. So synthetic vitamins, for many reasons, are not good because they can create these inadequacies later on in our bodies. Our bodies are having to do the job of what a whole food naturally would do for us. Now natural sourced ones are things where you might see um, vitamin A fish oil. Now they're derived from the fish oil and some are extrapolated a bit more in a laboratory based on that molecular structure. So they could be synthetic even though they're naturally sourced. And that could be a bigger game to look into, but definitely do your research. Talk to the health food specialist there. Find a nutritionist, herbalist. They'll be able to talk to you a little bit more about this. Now when it comes to whole food supplements, it makes it a lot easier to understand what you're getting. Because whole foods will simply say derived from uh, acerola cherries, um, like a vitamin C, a very popular one, or camu camu berry. And so you might find 500 milligrams of camu camu berry, and they'll tell you how much vitamin C there is in it. And even the fruit itself, like half a, per half a percent by weight is vitamin C of the actual fruit. Now these are obviously, you're getting the bioflavonoids, the carotenoids that it might have, the zeanthanine, the astaxanthin, it has the root and the ascorbogen, and these are the things that your body says, okay, great, like I can utilize this quite quickly. I don't have to um, dump it out in the form of dark urine. So in all of this, we just want to be aware of what we're actually taking, what the difference is between synthetic and whole foods, and the nice thing that we're seeing is with the education of this market, we are going to the whole foods, 
you want to be able to look at your B complex and see food names. If you're just seeing like the riboflavin and the palmitates, um, you're not getting what you should be. You're likely getting the darker urine and the minimal effect of it. So consider other options. There are, it does cost a little bit more to go to a whole food vitamin, but when you start appreciating the absorption and the ease of use on your body, it starts to make a bit more sense. So uh, whole foods, there are many great companies out there and they absorb better, they're easier on the body and I know it, it won't cause the, the kidney stones, which I haven't heard much of, that a lot of people say they have. The nausea won't cause the diarrhea that some people do when they take overdose synthetics. And the body says, hey, like I recognize this and I can metabolize it appropriately. So do your research, but um, there, there's a lot to know about synthetics. If you knew that most vitamin E's come from coal tar, um, if you look at like where Eastman Kodak, um, this is actually a byproduct of the film industry, that once they manufacture the oils from the coal, there's the, the, the waste product and that actually gets used as a B complex or uh, synthetic vitamin E. And you can go into the synthetic versions of other things, but they're not very pretty. And maybe I'll go into the difference between calcium fluoride and sodium fluoride down the road. One's synthetic, one's natural and one's being put into our water and it's not the natural one. So do your research and I wish you the very best.